Okay, so references are obviously a big part of the application process. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they can call your references before the interview or they can call your references after the interview. Yeah. Um, what's your intake on the type of references that you offer? The, the type of, first of all, the references that you list in your resume, I recommend, kind of depending on your situation, where you are in your career and the, the job you're applying for. If you are a student straight out of school, obviously one of the references might be an academic advisor or a professor that you've worked with closely and can give an, can give an accurate account of your work ethic, your character. If you're a little bit farther along in your career, or let's say you're applying for a job in a specific uh, discipline, you might want to use references that are in that discipline. For example, let's say you're a nurse applying for a job. One of the references you might want to use is a nurse supervisor that you have, or a nurse, a charge nurse that you've worked with. Um, you could you list a physician that worked that you worked with? Yes, but the physician's not a nurse, and this new hiring manager who is a nurse wants and probably is curious about metrics and competencies that a nurse would understand clearly, and a nurse would be measured upon. Now, this is, that's the case. If you've worked for a very small clinic with one or two doctors and you are the only nurse, then obviously, yes, you want to use um, a physician, someone in, in, the, in a clinical field that can give an account for the quality of your work. Um, could you use personal references? Yes, I prefer not to. But one of the things when you were already in the interview process, I would be, be very careful about is make sure when you list your references, there's people that are accessible. Meaning, uh, I heard a, a story one time, someone used a reference on their resume, but the reference was actually, you know, they were active duty military. They were deployed, so they're not, not able to reach them. So right there, that's one person they can't speak to. Now they got to move on to the second one. So even in the resume writing process, at, at, at that point, even before we apply for the job, definitely list people who you've been in contact with frequently, who are accessible, who actually answer their phone, and I would also send them a text, send them an email, reach out to them on social media or whatnot, and give them a heads up about the jobs you're applying for so they have an idea of what, what's coming their way when someone calls them. So, yeah, just make sure those people, make sure the numbers are accurate, they're updated, same thing with email addresses, so that the hiring manager, if they like you as one of their top candidates and they're making those calls, your references are, are a reflection of your reliability and your, your, your ability to communicate with people. If your references don't even know you're applying for jobs. What does that say about your quality of your communication skills? <laughs> right, So keep, right. just keep those, keep those things in mind. And no family references, right? No, I wouldn't use any family references at all, uh, um, even if you did work side by side with them. Just because even though you may know and they may not be a person who is biased towards you, which is, is it's hard to get, get by, um, the person who is calling the references, they don't know you well, they don't know your family, and they might innately already think, yeah, this person's going to be biased towards them. So, right. Yeah.